today, right here, right now, this is the moment that you will finally say, I'm growing my accounting practice. And you're going to discover exactly how, right here, right now, on the Grow My Accounting Practice podcast. Welcome, everyone. We're back live in the studio audience for the first time in four years. Yeah, <laughs> this is... This is that was Ron Taharian. This is Mike Bukalowitz, uh with dramatic pauses in there. Mm. We are back in the studio. It's been about it really has been about a year and a half. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you, my friends, are listening to GMAP Sense for Grow My Accounting Practice. I'm also an author of a brand new book, by the way, called Get Different. We are here to teach you the step by step how to grow your accounting and bookkeeping and coaching practices. And uh, we do it through a great guest interview going all the way in from Israel today. We also have a GMAP Now task, one task if you do, you see results, and Ron's got some insider access for you. Yep. Don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode ever. 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 So, Ron, yeah. uh, Chris and I really enjoyed spending time with you yesterday at your house. Oh, yeah. Um, it was our families. It wasn't just me, you, and Krista. Mary, and your daughter was there. And Jane. And Jane Mary. was there. Yep. And uh, Mary. And Dallas. Dallas, your new dog, which is, it is shocking to see you rolling around on the ground with a dog um, when just a few years ago you would have even petted a dog. The, the meal you made was pretty good. I was pretty impressed by your mm. cooking abilities. Ah, thank you. It was a, a recipe that Liz gave us to, uh, the other day. And that was the first time you ever made it? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was all right. Oh, I liked it. I liked oh, it. thank well, you. I love tuna. I love tuna. Yeah, it was seared tuna. Nicely done. Sushi grade, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes all the difference. And then just with the little sauce on it, my gosh. With honey. I think there oh, was there honey. honey in there? Yeah, there was some orange juice, some lime, a lot of a soy. It was, it was and good. And your favorite, um, freshly peeled or scraped. Oh, ginger. Ginger. I love ginger. Yeah, that stuff's I was I was strong. explaining poorly like when we were meeting. Like I love dry ginger because, you know, you don't have to peel it. You just carry it with you. But they only make it covered with sugar. Yeah. And it's just, I don't like that. Mm. I mean, it tastes great, but uh, the sugar, just, it starts making my teeth feel like crud. So. Well, you're on your second set of dentures. I'm on my second <laughs> set of dentures. Yeah. Her name is Adi Moor uh, Siso. And uh, I, I told her I would try to pronounce it quickly. So it's Adi Moor Siso. There we go. Yes. A high-performance coach. Uh, she's working with creative and ambitious women on growing their businesses, and uh, of course, she works with them in profit first. She's located in Israel, and today we're going to talk about mindset, and not just managing your own, but also meeting your client's mindset, which I think is something that's often overlooked. So, with no further ado, Adi, welcome to our show. Oh Hi. my! <laughs> How are you? I'm hungry now after that beginning. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's your favorite meal to eat? Do you have like a favorite go-to one? Um, I think Italian is my best. That's an easy one, Is right? your best like your favorite or like you cook Italian stuff? No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cooking. <laughs> <laughs> At all? <laughs> no, just a little bit, you know. Uh, only the, when I have to. The, yeah. How was the gruel when you were uh, serving as a Navy officer in the uh, military? Oh, wow. Um, was it good? Good food? Um, most of the time, you know. Uh, they tend to sometimes spoil um, the Navy officers. <laughs> at oh, sea. Oh. really? <laughs> so most of the time it was very good. Oh, that's cool. That's super And it's cool. our cooking. So we, we have like um, a cook, but we share the, the meals. So um, uh, everybody cooks. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I'm sure... Perhaps the, your military experience plays into this in that um, mindset is arguably one of the most important facets of success or failure. Is, is that true? Yeah, for sure. It's a big one. And, you know, we tend to uh, talk about a, a lot about um, business tools, but not as much um, as personal development tools or personal mm. power and mindset. And that could make a huge difference between success and failure. So how do you help someone with mindset? It seems fixed in all of us. Um, you know, there's a big difference between a fixed mindset and growth mindset. It's not my idea. Mm. There's a book about that mindset. Um, Carol Dweck, I think, the, the author. Uh, Carol Dweck. And um, growth mindset 
is like a flexible mindset. It's the mm. difference between uh, getting a result or a failure and thinking that's the only way it could go and getting a result or failure and ask yourself, okay, what's the next step? What could I do or should I do uh, tomorrow? Or uh, with whom I can um, you know, talk to and improve my, my next step. So this is a growth mindset and that's a big difference. In your own personal life, did you always have a growth mindset or is this something you achieved? Uh, I think it's like a mus muscle. So maybe uh, as a child, I, um, I, I tend to be more uh, on the growth mindset, but not on all of the topics of my life, right? So um, we probably tend to uh, grow in some of the areas like maybe school or social or something like that, but other other topics will, will not. Uh, for me, by the way, it was money. Money was my, mm. my fixed mindset. And that was a huge problem for me as a business owner. That's what I needed to change to grow my business. So it's interesting. So is that your experience? Maybe I'm reiterating here, but that people have fixed mindsets around certain things, perhaps money, and growth mindsets elsewhere? It and could be, yeah. Is it Okay. Well, well, okay. So when you work with your clients, what's the most common scenario they're walking in with? Are they fixed in everything or how's it working? Uh, that's a good question. I think uh, it depends on the problem So, or, or the topic you're co coaching on. For me, I work with uh, business owners and most of the uh, women that I work with comes with, um, I don't have enough time, or I'm not making mm. enough money, or I don't have the time to do X, Y, Z, right? So that's mm -hmm. their fixed mindset on that topic as a woman or a mom or an entrepreneur. So um, that's my, my um, the most common ones. But for sure, on, on a, I don't know, health or, or something else, there'd be other um, sentences, right? Or, or things that people say. So ha ha sometimes I might think that I ha I'm open-minded, but right. I might actually have a fixed mindset. H how would I go about evaluating whether or not I'm always uh, – have their growth mindset you know the easy tool the easiest tools i have for that is uh putting a question mark in the end of the sentence because mm -hmm. most of the people there's there's a dot there or right Ex exclamation mark uh mm -hmm. on that belief or sentence or the things they're they're saying about i don't know whatever and when I change that and just pu putting a question mark in the end of the questions, like a, a little doubt, just just a crack uh, on that belief will make a lot of difference in, in the perspective. I will open my or other pe uh, person perspective on the topic to think about other ro roads or ways to go about um, the difficulty. So if I have a, a, a fixed mindset uh, with money, would I be having statements like uh, it's hard to make money out there, money doesn't grow on trees, or um, how do I make money grow on trees? <laughs> um, I wish, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, ju that just a phrase, money gro grows on trees. What's the belief or, or um, the way it, it comes about in my reality? So uh, it's hard to make money. It's hard for me. I'm working hard a lot of hours and I'm not uh, making results. It's hard for mm. me to get new clients. Um, all the clients go to that person because I'm not like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it's not just um, the phrase I'm using, it's the way it comes uh, to reality in my day-to-day -day life. So what's happening over there? And there I want to put a question mark. Okay, how could I do that differently? Um, is or uh, are all my clients are like that? Or is there something I could do a little bit different to get uh, more clients, the best clients I did last year? 
So it's asking myself better questions because, you know, sometimes we, we tend to just um, receive the reality as it is, but asking myself better questions, it's, it's a sure way to improve my life. So questions. Right. So, so, so that's, so that's internalizing, right? Uh, working on ourselves and our mindset. But right. one of the things that um, we were talking beforehand is our, our, our listeners are owners of accounting, bookkeeping, and coaching firms right. primarily. Uh, how, how, how can they leverage, mm-hmm. you know, the knowledge that you're sharing to help them work with their customers? I mean, is this, a, is this something, we, a tool we can utilize to help our customers with the mindset? Or is this more of an awareness of what their mindset might be so we know how to navigate whatever obstacles face us? I think, first of all, it's awareness because um, our perspective, our point of view is a little bit different than the client. So as for an accountant that's good with numbers and it's very professional and, and know his, his job, his pers- or her perspective is, is very different than a business owner uh, with a lot of triggers and problems with their money and the way of, of um, experiencing uh, business life. So it's, first of all, it's different perspectives and points of view and, and ways to experience the business. And um, that that's a huge one because that allows me to grow empathy and mm. understanding of the other side of the person in front of me, the client. So that's a huge one to begin with. So I want to talk about meeting the client's mindset from the perspective of, of how do I even get started? Yeah. Do I need to identify what clients I want to meet or is this for every client I regauge myself to match their mindset? So first of all, um, money in general is is one of the biggest triggers people have. Um, maybe for women more than men, I'm not sure because I'm working uh, mainly with women, so I meet that a lot. Uh, you tell me, um, but but it's a huge topic and trigger as for uh, worth and um, uh, how. Um, my, my set of beliefs about my ability to achieve wealth and money. And because of that, when I address a conversation with, with a business owner or, or women, um, it, it depends, I want to make sure I'm bring, bringing empathy to the conversation and understanding mm-hmm. of the other side. So they can relate to my professional side and not just, you know, not just the, the numbers. So I want to maybe explore as an accountant the language or, or the phrases or the emotions other people bring to the table as clients. And we can do that in very, you know, in a very easy way, like going to, I don't know, Facebook groups or other online conversation and just read about how people phrase themselves in regards to money or, or um, wealth or money problems or accounting and use those phrase, phrases to, uh, in, in the marketing, for, for example. Because sometimes we just um, discuss the topic from our professional, you know, language or words, and we are not phrasing our marketing materials as the clients uh, using the, the phrases. So I want to um, use that, use empathy, and use um, a little bit of emotional intelligence in the conversation to meet their clients on their mindset, their other side of the bridge, right? Because the clients are on the one, uh, one side and we are on the other side as an accountant. So I have to go to their uh, side so I can bring them over to the other side of the bridge, to the professional side or the other side they can relate to. I like that. Uh, one of the concerns, though, that popped into my head was that if I'm using, um, you know, m- marketing to speak to some of those clients but that may have a negative mindset uh, with regards to finances, 
do I, I that could be a slippery slope. Maybe I don't want to work with those customers. Right. That have that. I, 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 can I guess the the flip side would be to use um, different verbiage in marketing to appeal to those that have uh, a growth mindset. Um, I think most of them, uh, people that uh, tend to uh, work on the personal development side will already be on the growth mindset. So if Mm, I want to work with those people, it will be fine using them like the positive phrases or, you know, what could be or what I can change because they are already in the growth mindset. And if I want to work on the fixed mindset, I I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't work with those people. <laughs> um, but, you know, that will be probably the clients that will be hard to work with or uh, they'll right. have a lot of uh, complaints or um, negative, you know, feedback or something like that. Do I start working with my own mindset? Do I start focusing on empathizing with customers? Where's the best place? If I want to grow my business, who do I got to work on first or how do I approach it? For me, it's um, from the inside out. Like I want to work on my personal power and my my personal leadership. I want to lead myself before I can lead others or my business or whatever I want to lead in my life. So for me, I want to work on myself first and then go outwards. You know, but the problem is that most of the time it's the other way around because uh, we work on my, our business and the money stuff and, you know, all the other external uh, topics. And then we're realizing, oops, <laughs> we have a problem. We're getting stuck on that topic or on that problem. And we're in loops on uh, certain things mm-hmm. and we go inwards to work, work on that. So uh, my, you know, uh, for me, it's inwards uh, first, but if we're going external, the inwards will catch up with us. And uh, for our, our listeners, you know, some people struggle saying, I, you know, I need to become a consultant. I've been an accountant or bookkeeper for a long time. We are so entrenched and experienced in doing a certain thing in a certain way. I, I presume there's going to be this resistance, like a battle going on in our head. Yeah, we need a more empowering mindset, but my experience is limited to, you know, X, Y, Z. So what do I do in that scenario where I have a, a lifetime experience pointing one direction, but I want to start taking a new one? Mm. Hmm. That's uh, an interesting uh, question because uh, as I see it, we are, you know, we have a life to live. So for me, it's an endless yeah. road of evolution and growth mm. over a lifetime. And it starts with, you know, the first step and then the second step and then the third and it's it's endless. And when I can um, remember that even that I have a lifetime to, um, you know, uh, grow my mindset or change or or do whatever I want in that regard, it it's it's um it's just a good reminder. We have time. It's not a problem. Evolution and growth over a lifetime. What what would you suggest to the business owner that you're coaching and they have somebody, a a staff member that's always complaining, uh, you know, they're, they're not necessarily accepting responsibilities over and over and over again, but the person's been with that company for five to 10 years. What, What would you suggest to the business owner they do with that individual? Um, business wise or, or personal wise, mm-hmm. business wise, <laughs> because sometimes we have to do the hard choices, right? Um, because five, 10 years, that's a lot of time that, you know, we have difficult with one person, one individual, mm. and sometimes we have to do the hard decisions and the hard choices. And, you know, I had to do the same with, um, COVID, um, last year when, I have to, you know, for a while even let um, off my staff and, you know, be alone in my own own business, right? So I can uh, use uh, Profit First in the right way and, you know, um, make the hard decision so my business survive and that proves itself very well. And I brought everybody back after a while. Oh, nice. 
Um, so business-wise, I have to sometimes do the hard choices. Personal-wise, yeah. you know, personal-wise, it's hard. And that's where, um, you know, emotional intelligence and breathing and consulting with the right people and getting uh, like emotional support on those topics will help because it is hard. It, it's, it's not convenient, right? But it's something so sometimes that- we have to do. So you're basically agreeing that a bad apple can spoil the bunch. Yeah, is that, sure. Is that yeah. your assessment? Right. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> and it's, it's, On the it's, apple theme, though, I heard surround yourself with other apples. <laughs> how do you – good apples. Yeah. So how do you find the – if you want to have an empowering mindset, how do you find the people to surround yourself with? Okay. So, you know, for me, that was a very uh, difficult uh, road to – uh, you know, figure out <laughs> because I do have a stuff right now, but it's not always been that fluent and, and easy as it is right now. And the one thing I develop through the years is how to find the right growth mindset people to surround myself with. And I just interviewed differently and ask different questions that tend to get different answers from fixed mindset people from and growth yeah. mindset people. So I just develop like a system for me to evaluate and, and recognizing uh, growth mindset people to um, bring into my business. Okay. And, How? And, yeah. And when it comes- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, uh, what is growth mindset people? It, those people are asking questions, want to um, try different uh, things. If something um, happened, they want to maybe um, evaluate how can, how can they address the problem differently. So I, you know, I just address them with questions or scenarios in the business. If that isn't working or if that happens, what would you do? Or what did you do on, you know, other jobs you did uh, on that topic? And if there's a problem, how do you address that? And sometimes you can just hear the, the beliefs under the surface. If uh, a person is a fixed mindset person, you will see he's talking, he's, he's stuck on the answer. I don't know. I have to think about it. Um, but growth mindset people will say something like, okay, did you try that? Can I try that? Can I do this? Uh, can I, do I have more resources? It will ask more questions um, to evaluate a new way to go about it. So this is kind of the difference between fixed mindset and growth mindset people. And you can build like a system from, from your own, you know, content or topics in your own business and give them scenarios to, to deal with. Do, do we want to seek diversity when we surround ourselves with others or do we want to seek kind of a, a, a strong, consistent vantage point, a similar type of group? I like diversity. I think uh, we all have different strengths and um, like bases of knowledge. And when we surround ourselves with different people and points of view, but all with growth mindset, so they all want to grow and evolve and learn and experience things. Um, that will bring you, you'll, be, you'll build a stronger team like that, right? So it doesn't have to be the yeah. same, just people that want to grow together. Actually, in the book Rocket Fuel, um, he talks about like building a team. And he, yeah. he, he, he talks about the difference between the visionary and, and the integrator and the difference between them and the importance of building a strong team with different uh, strengths, right? Interesting. Gino, uh, Gino's on vacation today. I talked to him on Friday. He was leaving for his sabbatical. Oh, nice. He leaves the company during the summer and just lets the integrators run it. You know, I, I love that book, Rocket Fuel, yeah. uh, mainly because I'm the integrator and you're the visionary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's an important team. You, you, right. A visionary without integration, nothing gets done. An integrator without vision, there's no forward movements, a spinning wheel. Well, I, I think that, you know, those are skill sets. Um, right. But I think, you know, our mindsets are, you know, one of optimism 
right? Yeah. One of uh, growth. Cultural fit, yep. yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. cu- cultural fit. And so, you know, I, I, I think that different skill sets, you know, are great. Yeah. D- diversity is great. And we're talking about the mindset within those individuals. Yeah. Adi, do you find that that perhaps it's better not only to have a powerful mindset, but also to surround yourself with people when it comes to getting things done with people that are different than you? Um, how different? <laughs> In what way? Radically different. <laughs> like, you are the biggest jerk, Adi. I will never <laughs> do anything for you. Like, so you have that person working for you. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, you're good. You answered. All right, good. I was just testing you. If you said, yeah, yeah, they're great. I mean, no. I had a horrible time, man. I was trying to, there was, a, I was working for a company and um, one of the employees just had a horrible fixed mindset, angry everything. Yeah. And the, the no one wanted to work with the guy. No one wanted to do anything. But yeah. the owner was so loyal to him that it, it had a horrible, horrible impact on the culture. Yeah, because it shows the owner supports the sky as yep. opposed to the corporate. Yeah. Yeah. So Adi, what, what do you do? I, how do you surround yourself with the right people? So I'm building all kinds of, um, circles, um, in different topics, I think in my life. So I have like, a um, like a professional mastermind for me so I can, you know, nice. ask questions and, and get advice and, meet on a regular basis. So this is, this is a good one. And I have like another friend I'm talking to like, um, every, every other week on a regular basis as well on another topic on a month, a mindset topic and, and, uh, like conversation about, um, abundance and, and money. And sometimes like, um, like marketing energy and stuff like that. And I have a bunch of other friends I'm meeting like in a social way so I can, you know, be a woman, you know, and a friend and not just a business owner and a coach. Yeah. I, I tend to coach a lot of, you know, all my surrounding uh, environment and people. And I need like a group I can be just a D and, and a person. Yeah. So... I think we need all, and I have a therapist, so we need all kinds of people around us to get support. And, you know, this is a very um, strong feature of high performance people, like in, like in sports, right? In the Olympics, high performance sport athletes, right? They have a a team Mm -hmm. around them, a lot of support, all kinds of physical, mental support. We need that as well as business owners mm. on all kinds of level, not just high performance people, because for high performance people, it's like obvious we need support because yeah. we, we are high performers. But, you know, we tend to think we can manage ourselves alone and we'll, we'll, we'll get by, we'll do it, we can do it, <laughs> you know, it's fine. <laughs> but we need much more support than we think. Uh, and, especially, and again, especially as high performers. How would our listeners know if they're going down the path of uh, maybe they think that they're in a growth mindset, but they're acting in a way that is fixed, their communication is fixed? I mean, what are some of the, the tail, si- tail signs? Is that what it is? Tell, 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 tell signs. <laughs> That's a, a new phrase a for me, so it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning every day. Um, the tail. Nice. That's an open mindset. It's yeah. a growth mindset. <laughs> you nice. see? Live. Yeah. yeah. Impressive. Um, okay. So if you're getting angry a lot, frustrating, um, if you're uh, fighting with people a lot or um, getting insulted, if, we're, if you're getting stuck on a, on a subject, on a topic, if something is not working for a long time, you know, for a long time, if you're not moving ahead in your business and you want to, if you want uh, to change something in your life and your business and you, you feel like you can't, I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't, uh, you know, um, get those clients. I can't. All those tales are on the, on the fixed mindset, you know, uh, scale. And it sounds like they're being a victim. Yeah. Is that yeah, yeah, right? that's a big nice one. Yeah. But you know, um not everyone who wants to admit they're a victim, right? That's a harsh word. I'm a victim of my life. So I tend to break it down to like, you know, 
um, as you said, tales. So I can, you know, just address at least that, you know, uh, fighting right. with my partner or um, getting stuck on that topic in my business. So I want to address a specific topic because when you crack uh, the fixed mindset person, you know, um, mindset, just a little crack. You just need a little, you know, sh- ray of light to come in and to change the perspective just a little bit so they can switch to growth mindset and practice. We have to practice on that. You know, that's coaching, right? Practicing every day. Uh, Brandon Bouchard says very beautifully, um, it's, you know, sometimes it's it's uh, common knowledge, but not common practice. You have to practice on that. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we're saying this, by the way, you, you mentioned uh, athletes. Israel has a medal in the Olympics already. Yeah. And, uh, but <laughs> shockingly, lost in the judo uh, competition. For now. For now. You know, <laughs> for now. For now. For now. But yeah, it'll come back. They'll, they'll fight for it. I, anyway. I didn't they'll know for Israel it. was known for its. Yeah, they'll fight for it. Even though, even though the, the games are, the medal count's over, it's done, there's no more winning, they'll still come back and fight for it. <laughs> Next That's one. Right. We, we hit stuff. Yeah, Next exactly. Olympics, right? I love your attitude. That's a growth mindset. Adi, Mayor, CISO, where can we learn more information about you? Uh, the easiest way is on socials, uh, Facebook, my full name, Adimo, CISO, or Instagram, um, I, I have, um, some in Hebrew, some in English, but it's easy to find me. Fantastic. Adi, yeah. thank you so awesome. much. Nice for job, Adi. We'll have links in the show notes too, my friends. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, Adi. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. All right, Ron, we have to recap what we learned from Adi. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know why I say this every single time. I'm really doing it for the education, I guess, of our audience, even though they've heard it a million times, but we got to recap what we learned. You got insider access? I do. Oh, good. And I got a uh, GMAP now task. All right. Do you want to have the low hanging fruit on what she said, or should I take it? You take it. <laughs> Simply put a question mark at the end of the sentence to change to a growth mindset. My gosh, is that a winner? Yeah, I, I what I had is uh, you can identify the fixed mindset and the growth mindset through systems and better questioning, especially through interviewing. There you go. Yeah, I love that. Yep. We want to know what you learned too. So uh, when you do rate and review us, we'd be honored if you do. It helps promote the show. Please put your thoughts in about this episode specifically. We'd like to see it. Yeah. All right, Ron, whip out that lightsaber. There it is. Whoa, watch it. I forgot how small the studio was. Right, right. Yeah, wow, awesome. Cool. So, yeah, Insider's Access. One of the things that we do here to help with uh, building each other's mindset is something that we call the compliment circle, right? The compliment circle. One of the things we do is uh, every now and then there'll be an employee, and we all sit in our morning huddles. We all have the opportunity to compliment them on what they – what yeah. we like about that. Yeah. And everybody goes around, you know, the the, the Zoom screen. Yeah. And it's it's so powerful. It's so wonderful. I mean, you know, by sharing regular compliments with your teammates, it's just going to show them how much more you appreciate them than the staff is sharing what they like about them, what they're doing, and how they helped them out. And it really just builds a great culture and a community full of compliments. Yeah, stay on the microphone. Oh, the sorry. microphone turned away from you, and you started fading out. Oh. Um, that was mind-blowing good. <laughs> and uh, I know in college you talked about uh, you had something like a compliment circle, but, you know, something college gives me real jerks. You call it a jerk circle? <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. I couldn't even say it. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, make sure you don't cut that one, Phil. All right, so <laughs> there's one more thing. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> It's We're back to the studio. I know. I don't see a jerk. <laughs> yeah, this, there you go. Sophomoric. It's sophomoric. Coll- collegiate. I think that's what one of the reviewers said. I can't stand these guys, collegiate or sophomoric humor. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I lost the listener. We lost oh, Bayless because of that. Oh, God. But I'll tell you, we're being true to ourselves, you know, and, and you f- you find people that like that and resonate and other people. Oh, resonate. I don't like it. <laughs> you love it. You love it. I do. You love it. <laughs> All right. Come on. Give us a GMAT test. GMAT test. One test if you do see results. A real simple one, um, similar to that gro- growth mindset, go to a prospect of yours and ask them to rate whatever you want, rate it on a 1 to 10. Like, how's our service? What would you give us on a 1 to 10, 10 being best? No matter what they say, say, that's interesting. Why did you score us so high? It's a It positions mm. that customer for arguing why they like you. So listen, if you say on a 1 to 10, what's our service? They're like a 6. Like, wow, interesting. A 6, why did you raise that high? 
and they'll say, well, and then they'll start pointing out all the features about you. The mistake that most people do is they say, on a one in 10, where are we? Nine, oh, where are we falling short on? And you start this negative downward spiral. So give a, give a one to 10 and ask them, why so high? And they'll. So, so uh, me being me, yeah. I always, Mike, you got a two. Yeah, I'll be, wow, that's pretty low, actually. <laughs> you should go back to your jerk uh, group there in college. All thank right, you. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, listener. Thank you, Adi. And let, don't forget to subscribe, like, and tell your friends about Grow My Accounting Practice Podcast. Yeah, we'd be honored. Hey, one more thing Ron and I would be honored to do is go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com. I think you will grow by going there. Just check out the site. See what all the things we're doing. See if potentially you could have a better business by perhaps, perhaps joining us. Once you go to ProfitFirstProfessionals.com, you'll see an Apply Now button. That's where you get started. Click on that, fill out the form, and uh, you'll have a conversation likely with Ron himself. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Really not much else to say. Let's uh, get out of here, Ron. All right. See ya.